What's going on everybody? It's the Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. And now I'm going to do a video that I just did, but I didn't hit the record button. So here we go again. Awesome. Uh, this is going to be a fun video. It's going to be a lot of speculation. Uh, and, and for me, that's what makes this whole thing more exciting. The whole drama between Hideo Kojima and Konami has been eating at the ears of gamers for the last year. You know, at least for the last year. Everybody wants to know what happened. We feel like no one's going to, you know, kind of spill the beans and tell the story. Uh, but nonetheless, through everything that apparently has been done against Hideo Kojima, the man has persevered. You know, he's he's kept it quiet. He's He's been humble. He's had a smile on his face. His family wants him to retire. He said, no, I want to make games for as long as I live. And he came out of E3, Sony's E3 press conference, and kind of blew the roof off the place and said, hey, look, I'm back, everybody. Everybody just kind of jumped out of their seats and went crazy, myself included. And then he proceeded to show the uh, idea of what his new game is, Death Stranding. Now, some people saw this trailer for Death Stranding and just went crazy and said, wow, man, I'm so excited. Kojima is such an, you know, a very interesting guy. His, his imagination is just unique and the games he makes are just awesome. And some people looked at that trailer and dissected the hell out of it, Alex Jones style, and said, hey, man, this is a conspiracy. This is him creating an allegory to what happened between himself and Kanabi. And <laughs> I'll drop a link in the description because I don't know what to believe. It's very, very interesting. Is the Death Stranding trailer an allegory for the Kojima Konami drama? One of the most memorable things that happened during Sony's E3 press conference was when Hideo Kojima came onto the stage like a WWE wrestler to announce that he was back and working on a brand new game. This moment could be seen as a finale to all the drama that's happened between he and Konami last year. Kojima is moving forward with a new project, but could the trailer of Death Stranding actually be an allegory for the events of 2015? If a fan's theories are correct, then it certainly is. Here's how the theory goes. The trailer features the likeness of actor Norman Reedus waking up naked on a blackened beach, surrounded by the corpses of various sea animals. In this case, Reedus represents Hideo Kojima, and the creatures represent dead Konami franchises. There is a pair of handcuffs on Reedus' left hand, meaning that he was once a prisoner, but now is free. The baby that Reedus picks up and holds represents the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Like in real life, this franchise was taken from Kojima almost without warning, and we see tiny handprints made by an invisible infant crawling towards the five enigmatic entities, which could be faceless Konami executives. Despite all this, Reedus' character remains resolute, with an air of confidence about him. He stands up and walks toward the shoreline in an act of defiance. This could be seen as Kojima not succumbing to all the hardships he's had to endure. He is pressing forward. The fact that the song being played during the trailer is called I'll Keep Coming is a testament to Kojima's perseverance. The USB-like necklace that Reedus is wearing can be seen as his ideas, the things he carries with him that no one can take away. In an interview with Eurogamer, Kojima stated that the trailer has nothing to do with what has happened between he and Konami, and that he suspected people would try to make such a connection. This could very well be true, but it's also possible that Kojima possibly can't say that the trailer is an allegory for fear of possible blowback. After all, it's not professional to trash talk your former employer. It's also possible that Hideo's entire ordeal leaked into this trailer subconsciously. He may not have intended for it to be a deliberate allegory, but it could have ended up there regardless. This is really a, a, an interesting take on it. I didn't think about all that stuff. You know, E3 was really exciting for me. I was just more excited to see Kojima back and, and working and, and doing what he loves to do. His family's wanted him to retire for a long time. But he came out and said last year that he wants to make video games as long as he possibly can. And, and for someone with such a unique take on gaming and development, I think it's a big plus for anybody who's able to play his games. I didn't think of all the stuff that was mentioned here. I didn't think about the USB around his neck being possible ideas, uh, the dead animals around him being uh, series like uh, Castlevania, Contra. These series are dead. Silent Hill, dead. And Kojima is kind of waking up and, and, and bringing his ideas with him. Uh, it's a very interesting take. It's very, very possibly true. You know, I'm, I'm a funny guy, so for me, the only thing I took from this was the I'll Keep Coming song. It could have been an allegory to the time that the Konami executives found the Bukaki video of their wives in Kojima. I mean, it could be anything. But you guys let me know what you think this means in the comments below. Do you think that Kojima is just an incredibly talented guy with a unique perspective on creating games? Or do you think that he's so goddamn good? Because <laughs> he could be. 
I mean, that he can create a vertical slice of a game, but at the same time be trashing the people who did him wrong over a year ago. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. Just go crazy with your own conspiracy theories of what happened in that trailer. If you enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up and show support for the channel. Follow me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and tell all your friends about me. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time. Take a, take a, take a, take a